Good morning, I'm Dr. Vidhu Anand from Mayo Clinic Rochester, um, fellow in training. With me here is Dr. Barry Borlaug, uh, and we're going to talk about Indy HFPF trial. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Vidhu. So can you tell us a little bit about the pertinent findings of Indy HFPF trial? Well, as you know, there's no real proven, conclusively proven pharmacologic treatment for HFPEF. Um, and uh, we've got, there's a number of lines of evidence that suggest that impairments in nitric oxide signaling um, underlie the syndrome. So we tested whether nitrite delivered through an inhaled nebulized route could improve exercise capacity. And it was a crossover trial. It was a fairly short trial, four weeks of duration of treatment, of active treatment. Uh, but unfortunately, and contrary to our hypothesis, we did not find that nitrite improved peak exercise capacity, and it did not improve other key secondary endpoints that we look for, like quality of life by the Kansas City Cardiomyopathy Questionnaire, didn't improve um, New York Heart Class, didn't improve daily activity levels, which we actually measured by accelerometry. What do you think could have been different in terms of uh, trial design uh, that could have maybe made a difference? You know, I think at the time we, based on the data we had, we thought this we were um, balancing the best design with feasibility, which is always the tension when you're designing clinical trials. Um, in retrospect, I wonder if four weeks was enough treatment, and uh, I wonder if the drug, you know, which clearly improves hemodynamics, in retrospect, whether that was enough to believe that that would lead to an improvement in peak VO2 in the absence of training. Now, exercise training is the one thing that does work to improve exercise capacity and quality of life in people with HFPEF. And because nitrite becomes more active during exercise, maybe bringing together training plus nitrite would hold the key with a longer duration of treatment. And we're actually testing that now. Sounds very interesting, and we'll look forward to that results. Um, the next question is, we used in, uh, you inhaled nitrite in this study. Yeah. Can you tell um, the fellows in training about the rationale for using inhaled route? Yeah, so this is actually the first multicenter trial in, in heart failure patients of an inhaled therapy. And... Um, it's, it's actually kind of cool because inhaled therapy takes advantage of the largest surface area that we have for absorption of a drug um, in the alveoli. Now, regular inhalers um, like an albuterol, an MDI or something like that, really don't um, achieve small enough particles so that the medicine can be delivered all the way down to the alveoli, so it gets deposited more up in the large airways, which is what you want with things like asthma. This micro-nebulizer achieves, uh, the, the medicine behaves like a gas, gets all the way down, and you basically get systemic absorption like you would see with IV. So this, this, we had tried this with nitrite, but you could do this with other formulations of drugs that could be only given intravenously. Um, and we thought that that was a big advantage. So you get a maximal drug levels within five minutes after finishing the inhalation, so it's very rapid on, very consistent pharmacokinetics. Very interesting and definitely innovative idea. Um, so my last question to you would be, uh, what advice do you have for fellows in training who are interested in this uh, very interesting field of HFPEF and what are the prospects for research? Well, uh, you know, it's wide open right now. And, um, you know, this trial didn't work, uh, but that just means we need to try something else. Um, you know, it took Edison a thousand iterations before he figured out how to make a light bulb, and, and that's pretty much how, how HFPEF is looking, too. So there's uh, lots more to do in clinical trials, but I think we also need to step back and learn a little bit more about pathophysiology. And I think a lot of us are appreciating in the field that um, it's not just one disease, it's not just a stiff ventricle with diastolic dysfunction, that's a key part of it, but there's a lot of different phenotypes, and you know, we see those in the cath lab, we see it in the in the wards and uh, in the clinics. And I think that categorizing them um, more thoroughly and then designing you know, more targeted treatments that are tailored to those pathophysiologies, that's gonna hold the key to the future. And so I would recommend for fellows in training to you know, find a mentor that's interested in that and that's pursuing that and you know, really go after both those pathophysiologic studies and then some early sort of proof of concept type studies. Um, you know, we've, we've had some of those going at Mayo and you know, we've got our group uh, obviously is, is active in that and many others are too. So I think it's a really good opportunity. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, for more videos like this, please log on to youtube.com slash fits on the go.